Jerry Malley for SB Nation and PrivateTrade.com. It feels good to be back. It's been quite some time. There's tons to talk about, but today we're going to zero in and focus on the coaching vacancy for the Detroit Lions. As I fight through this cold, please bear with the nasally voice. Let's get right into it. Now, when I look at this thing, uh, there are three categories that I think the Lions uh, are primarily looking at in terms of who their next coach will be. And consequently, most NFL teams, they kind of take this approach, give or take a few more differences, a few more stereotypes in coaching. I'm going to tell you which one I prefer the most. We're going to throw some names out, and I'll tell you, as of right now, who I feel as though should be the Detroit Lions head coach. Now, the first category, and I'm putting an X by it, I'm crossing it out, it's the young upstart coach. Now, maybe he is a coordinator, defense, offense. Maybe he's a college coach. He's someone that comes in. He's probably young, and you hope to build your team along with him as he grows into a competent head coach. Names such as... Brian Kelly, names such as Jay Gruden, Mike Zimmer. These are all the names that are being thrown about. I'm putting an X by this name uh, for several reasons. Now, first off, the Lions have tried this three times in recent history, and none of them have worked. Marty Morningwig, young upstart offensive coordinator for the Niners. It did not work. Rod Marinelli, not that young, but he was a uh, fast-growing, popular upstart defensive coach for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Did not work. Then Jim Schwartz. Running the defense, coordinating it for the Tennessee Titans. Young, smart, upstart, you name it. He had success, but ultimately it did not work. Only one winning season in five years. So, you know, the fact that it didn't work before, that does not mean that the Lions went that route again, that it wouldn't work. But I'm still putting an X by that category. I don't want them to go the young upstart slash college coach way. The second is the living legend. This guy... More than likely, he's been away from football for a few years. He has Super Bowl success, and now maybe he's on television. Now maybe he's uh, an analyst of some sort on the radio. <clears throat> Putting an X by that one, too. Names such as John Gruden come to mind. Bill Carr. even heard someone talk about Mike Holmgren. Ultimately, I'm saying no. I'll give you Exhibit A, the Washington Redskins. You know, there comes a time... In the NFL history and the legacy of this game where the game may pass you by. You sit on the bench, on the sidelines, so to speak, uh, inactive, not coaching, not handling players, not managing the new personalities, the new style, the new schemes. Four or five years, when you come back, it might not work. That exhibit A of the Washington Redskins, I'm talking about Joe Gibbs who did that. Mike Shanahan, these guys have Super Bowls, multiple. They sit away for a while, they come back. Ultimately, it didn't work for either of them both getting the X. Uh, Mike ha uh, Shanahan most recently. So I'm putting an X by that. Now, at the end of the day, if I'm on Twitter, if I'm on private trade, and I hear that John Gruden or Bill Cowher is the next Lions head coach, I'm going to be happy. Come on. But if I had my druthers, whatever that is, do you know what what, what is druthers? People always say, if I had my druthers or everybody coming out of the Woolworth. I don't know what either one of those expressions mean although I use them all the time. But if I have my druthers, whatever that means, I'm putting an X by that. In this third category, having my druthers, is the type of coach that I would bring in. Someone that's not that far removed from the game, that has shown success, and that fits what the Lions have to offer. The two coaches that come to mind when I think about this are Ken Wisenhunt and Lovey Smith. Now, each day I'm going back and forth. One day I'm saying it's Ken Wisenhunt. One day I'm saying it's Lovey Smith. I would be elated with either one of them, but I'm slightly leaning toward Lovey Smith. Now, let's talk about Ken Wisenhunt. The success with quarterbacks is something that I think we're all pining for. Stafford has all the tools. He has a ton of talent, but he needs some correction. Whether he wants to uh, admit it or not, and that's for another video. We're going to be talking about that soon. But whether he wants to admit it or not, uh, he needs some help. He needs some correction. We feel as though Ken Wisenhunt could come in, a guy that's worked with Ben Roethlisberger, a guy that rejuvenated Kurt Warner, a guy that uh, he just resurrected the career of Philip Rivers. This is a guy, Rivers, who people say, oh, he's done. He's washed up. Now he's going to the Pro Bowl. So Ken Wisenhunt is a guy that we like for reasons such as that. He can help Stafford. He has success. We don't like our offensive scheme. He will come in and change things up. And he had tons of success going to the Super Bowl with an Arizona Cardinal team that many did not expect to reach such heights. So that's the case for Ken Wisenhunt. But I'm leaning toward Lovey Smith just slightly. Now, if you bring in Lovey Smith, I would say get the best of both worlds. You bring in Lovey Smith, and in addition to him, 
he brings in an offensive coordinator or a quarterback's coach that can help Stafford. See, then you can get the, the aspect of Ken Wisenhunt and helping Stafford along with the coach in Lovey Smith that I think is sublime, sublime, superb, whatever adjective, complimentary term you want to use. Bring this guy in. He'll bring Leslie Frazier along with him. Uh, Lovey Smith has success. I mean, this guy went to the Super Bowl with Rex Grossman and Kyle Orton under the helm. Um, going to the divisional championship, the conference championship. The year he got fired, he won 10 games. He walks over into a situation that has a lot of talent. He's been known as someone that uh, can, can instill discipline on your team, especially on defense. He has a knack for uh, creating turnovers. This is the type of culture that he breeds. This is the guy that I want. Additionally, he knows the Lions quite well. Going up against them twice a year, oftentimes being successful, he knows our weaknesses. He exploited them uh, several games throughout his career. So he knows, you know, for a good portion, uh, what it would take for us to correct, what little things we need to work on. Uh, Lovey Smith is the guy that I would like to bring in. And so there you have it. So it's up to you. Uh, first of all, what category, what type of coach do you want? Do you want a young upstart? You want a coordinator? You want a living legend? Do you want a, a former head coach from not that long ago? Uh, you name the category. And then throw out some names. Who do you want? We know Bill O'Brien was a hot commodity. He's gone now. We don't have to worry about that. He's in Houston. But there's still tons of names to go around. Speak of tons, there's tons of things to talk about. I'm going to be firing, hitting on all cylinders. We have so many videos. Like I said, i got a little bone to pick with Stafford. I've got a little comedy to throw in about the Lions. And uh, there's tons to talk about. So keep watching. We're going to be full force hitting you with several videos throughout the week. If you have not subscribed yet, the disappointing finger goes to you. Subscribe right now and all will be forgotten and forgiven. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. As always, this has been Jerry Mallory. Until next time, I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, we've been brought to you by SB Nation and PrideDetroit.com.